I'm trying to get it in the right spot. Yeah, this is Hannibal here from thehannibaltv.com. And today we have none other than WWE Hall of Famer Brutus the Barber Beefcake joining us. Uh -oh. Still strutting in a cutting, uh, multiple time champion, one of the all time greats. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. So Just forget about it. For some reason, don't I, worry about it. I can't see. Don't it worry, anymore. but you have to. Okay. Anyway, uh, no, oh, we can going. see you. We can okay. See well, you. as long as you can see me, everything's going going great. Um, but the funny thing is, is there's been how how long has it been since me and you uh, really talked or? I mean, oh, it's you know, been a while, actually, we, hasn't it? We had a few good, <laughs> a few times uh, out on the road, baby, and I mean, you know, the Great White North and the Canada and stuff. It was. Uh, <laughs> crazy times man in years past great times yeah yeah you're a very fun guy to to hang out with and, and we were definitely had some adventures but as far as the wwe hall of fame it was kind of a bit long time coming for you were you surprised when they finally gave you the call to put you in <laughs> i guess you know it's i had i had basically uh figured they were just we weren't going to do it and it's been so long and then uh yeah then uh hulkster called and said they want to do it and um they were going to use me to uh introduce the thing on sports illustrated a special some kind of intro my my uh announcement was going to be real special which just made me feel good you know um and uh you know, it was uh, Honky was in there, and um, we had we all had a good time. It was, you know, then that thing with Brett happened. Well, you know, the the, the fan jumped in there, and then Brett and then Davy Boy <laughs> was whooping on that guy, and then they dragged him out and whooped on him some more. It was. Yeah, that was the most entertaining Hall of Fame I think ever because. This year, I don't know if you saw it, there was only five inductees, and it was three hours long. Uh, it was just dragged out. I didn't get a chance, man. I was yeah, I was, uh, I was, uh, out in California for WrestleCon, so they were keeping me pretty busy. Oh, I can imagine. Did did you see anything of this Rick Steiner controversy at WrestleCon? I, yeah, I completely missed it, but it I, evidently it – it really happened like right around the corner or right before me, right after me. I'm not sure, I'm ashamed. but right before maybe or something. I don't know. I don't really know what happened. I'm not even, I don't yeah. Know. There, there's some people say, saying it was made up and other people saying it happened. So I don't know what the truth is. It's hard, it's hard to believe no one filmed it with wrestlers. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's got five phones in their pockets. The girls got three phones. You know, uh, how can nobody have, I have a phone to film that. There, there's a fan on here that wants to know if you ever wrestled Matt Bourne or Giant Gonzalez. <laughs> no, but I, I did a movie with Giant Gonzalez, um, and I did wrestle Matt Bourne um, in Portland, when my one of my early territories, 1979, and that's where Tony Bourne, his father, and and Matt were from Portland and that's where I was a young and up and coming guy I met wrestled Kurt Henning for his first match him and his dad came in and back back in the, <laughs> in the early days baby wow Kurt Henning's very first match yeah yeah what what did you think when he passed away he passed away so oh, suddenly that was an it happened in Tampa right here in my hometown it was it's needless, uh, terrible, you know, beautiful family, a son, a, a great wife, and it, just a tremendous family. It was just something that should have never happened. Just shouldn't happen. Now, as far as the first WrestleMania, you actually wrestled David San Martino on that card. Are you surprised at what a big spectacle it's become now? Two nights, big stadiums. Or did you know back when that first WrestleMania happened that this was going to be something big eventually? Uh, anybody that says they knew it, 
is a liar. Nobody had any clue. I mean, oh, we thought this was great. And this was going to be great. But nobody had a clue how big. And the whole two-day thing, okay, I'm not sure I really agree with it. I think if you got, a, you got something that works and it's great, why change it? You know what I mean? So. I guess just they don't want to turn down the money and they know they can make it even though it's watered down a little bit. <laughs> a little. <laughs> How was David San Martino? Because some people have said that, that he had attitude issues. Was he all right with you? Oh, he was fine with me. Um, I, I get along good with Bruno. I, I work with Bruno after the David thing because David pretty much uh, took off, left. And, and uh, so I actually worked with Bruno uh, several times and uh, I had, I had good, good, great matches with Bruno. I, I mean, it could, it could have went anyway. Bruno was an old school, old timer. And then he, um, he liked me. And, and so, I mean, we had a great match. He, he put me over like a million bucks. I put him over like a, like a monster, you know, super big baby face, man. I flew over the, all over the ring for him. And he put me over in his own hometown of Pittsburgh. I mean, that's, that's called passing the torch. That's, that's called, you know, the younger generation. Here's it comes to the up and coming talent. And, and you, you know, you, you give them the, the rub and, and tell everybody, yes, this is, this is a, this is a, a this is a superstar coming up. He did that for me, and that, that's I'll never ever forget it. I mean that that was huge, that was huge. Yeah, because I don't even think he did that for Honky Tonk Man when, <laughs> yeah. when Honky Tonk wrestled him. No, no, Hon Honky was a little you know strange to work with, and he wouldn't uh, really mix with with Bruno's mentality, his style, and everything. But I understood him, and 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 we. We clicked in the ring. It was we had great matches. We had great matches. It was it was real easy. Real. <laughs> now, when you came into WWE, was that around the same time that that Hogan came in, or did you come in slightly after him? Uh, slightly after him, he was he came in from Minneapolis. I had come through Minneapolis, uh, and then through New York, and that's when I wound up going over to Austria and working with Otto Vance. Then Vince basically sent me over in John Studd's place. They were they had just started the Hogan uh, run in New York, and John Studd was in a big uh, angle, and it was the very beginning, and they didn't want to have to try to pull him out of a week's worth of uh, main events. So they sent me over to wrestle this guy out of Vance, the Austrian, uh, the mayor of Austria, <laughs> actually of Graz. And he um, gave me such a rave review to Vince that I got at my meeting with Vince when I came home and cooked up the name Brutus Beefcake. And I, I cooked up the, the outfits and stuff while down in Florida. And then, boom, we hit the ground running. Now, was it Vince's idea for the, the stripper gimmick? I guess you weren't really a stripper, but I guess it was kind of – like that style with the bow tie and, and the fishnet uh, pants? Ah, well, <laughs> I, I, I completely caught them by surprise. I got the the clothes from a rock guy that made rock and roll clothes in Florida. And the whole stripper thing, Pat Patterson wanted me to be from San Francisco. The, the first place, I think, either they introduced me from parts unknown or it was San Francisco, but they wanted me to, I think they wanted me to be uh, the LGBT T guy like kind of or something, but that's not really where I was uh, focused. And I went with the more uh, the male stripper, the Chippendale kind of guy, rub with the bow tie and the boom and bang. And it needs to say it, uh, it worked fantastic. Yeah, it did. And one of your initial feuds was with Hulk Hogan, and you guys fought in front of some packed houses. Those matches are on YouTube. Yeah, you guys were already friends. Was that feud kind of something that he asked for, or did it just kind of fall into place with you getting over as Brutus? It just fell into place. It was only a natural of me 
with uh, me. I, was, I got red hot fast, and then they put me with him. It was selling out basically to anybody that he was with. But when they put us together, we were selling out in like a week. <laughs> when they started, they started selling tickets, and we we would sell out in like a couple of days. And they we really weren't used to that. And the 25, 30,000 seat arenas, everywhere was packed. There was a thousand people outside trying to scalp tickets, buy tickets or anything, thinking, nah, there's, there's going to be an extra tickets. Everybody showed up. There was wrestling was super hot. I was at the right place at the right time. No question about it. And had I, uh, you know, <laughs> arrogantly good looking Brutus beefcake and just rocked it. They, they you know, got, <laughs> it was fun. It was a blast. And the pay, I guess, was huge in those days. I, you know, it's I was getting pebbles, put, pence. You know, I was getting nickels and dimes compared to what some people were getting. Yeah. Did you guys but, kayfabe it on the outside, even though that, that you guys were close friends and you were one of his most trusted uh, confidants at that time? Would you still hide it in the hotels and bars and stuff? No, you mean no okay, Faven? Yeah. No, no. We, we rode in first class together in the planes. <clears throat> I knew where every in every town where the gym was. I knew where the best restaurant was. I knew what hotel we were in and where the arena was. So as soon as we hit the limousine at the airport, I just started telling the, the driver where to go. Okay, do we have enough time? Okay, we're going straight to the gym. We go to the gym, work out. Okay, boom, we go back to the hotel, we shower up real quick, we go boom to the arena, we hit the arena, come come back to the hotel, then you know it's the airport, that's what we did every day when we were working together. We just traveled together. Okay, Fabe at all. <laughs> Nobody cared. Right. Nobody cared. There was no internet. Was no. And the, everybody right. thought we were brothers. They, they were like, okay, you know. It's entertainment. It's the two brothers are wrestling. So they thought it was great. What was the schedule like in those days? Because now they're, they're lucky if they have one or two house shows a week. But I understand sometimes you do double shots on the weekends and you'd be on the road for weeks at a time. I talked to CBS a few years ago and they had called me and they were doing an interview talking about the first WrestleMania in the beginning there with Vince and WWF. And I went and found a couple of my old ledgers and went through and, and had wrote down where, you know, where TVs were. And I mean, maybe I didn't have every night it was a town, but there was a town every night. And then a lot of times, depending on what time of year it was, we had matinees on Saturdays and matinees on Sundays. So here it is. You got a TV week. So Monday, you wrestled four times. And if you're a feature, I was a feature. I got to be the last match of the night so that people would stay and watch all through the TV. So that's five matches. And then the next day was Tuesday. I wrestled five matches. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, wrestled two matches a day. And then now, okay, so you've, what was that? Ten uh, 18 to 20, to 22 dimes and in a week you were just wrestled. And that, that happened every, at least every month or every, every three weeks. So I, we wrestled 500 matches in 1984, 500 matches in 1985, 500 matches in 1986, 87, 88, 89, 90, I didn't get to finish out, but it would have been it would have been 500 matches. Greg and I had the belts. We wrestled 100 days in a row without even a day off. We got to actually go through Florida a couple of times so we could go by our house and change out some clothes and see your family or whatever you had and start your car or whatever and then back out onto the road. And we ran insanely hard and we, we did good do good greg and i made great money i did good money on my own you know we got we had merchandise and stuff like that it was was pretty decent but um 
you know, it never it doesn't last forever. You know, we have no, we had no insurance. We had no retirement, anything like that. So it, it, it won't be surprised how much money you can make. There was years, million dollar years after times and, you know, restaurants and homes and condos and vehicles and cars and this and that. And it's, one day there, next day it's gone, you know. We can't hear you. Oh. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. We lost your audio. Oh, can you hear me now? I oh, got it now. Got it yeah. now. Okay. I said, uh, would you have made more in WCW or WWE per year? Oh, no. WWE for sure. Okay. Much, a lot more. So, but, you know, WCW just paying the bills. Yeah. Someone wants to know about working with Dan Spivey, who uh, I think replaced Barry Windham when you and Greg were feuding with the U.S. Express. Yeah, Dan. Dan was uh, from Tampa. Uh, I knew Dan. Uh, yeah, he was like a mafia guy, t mob guy, tough guy, leg breaker. Real, you know, I, w I was surprised when he was, when I really realized he was actually a real wrestler. And Dan was just the nicest guy, too. You'd never know. But you know what? If you made him mad, you had a mean streak a mile wide. And the guy was tougher than the nails. He gave Adrian one hell of a wake-up call, nearly killed him with his bare hand, bare knuckles, hitting him three or four times, almost almost killed him. I've never seen anybody so busted from a from bare knuckle shots, Danny was lethal. <laughs> he, was, he was lethal, but you know I got along great with him. He was a—he's a Florida boy, you know. I and, and, and I love him. <laughs> the, the Undertaker said he was a pimp, so I guess that kind of goes with what you were saying. He, yeah, he was. He, yeah, he was. He did all kind of stuff. He was. <laughs> He, he collected money. He was a leg breaker. He did all kind of stuff like that before the wrestling business. <laughs> yeah, well, Barry quitting on a mic there. I mean, you know, that, that, that was a total screw job on me and Greg. You know, we work with those guys and then and put them over a lot. And then when we switched the belts, you know, we're supposed to work with them for at least six months. It's all booked. And then within a week, Barry quits. Now we got six months of matches and what are we supposed to do? So Barry boned us big time, Greg and his partner too. And, uh, you know, Danny stepped in, but it wasn't the same. You, you can't substitute like, like that. And, you know, it wasn't anything on Danny. It just, you know, so then they shot the Bulldogs to us and, and the Rockers and two or three tag teams, the, the, the Killer Bees. They shot, you know, and we mauled the Killer Bees. And then the Rockers, they were okay. The Rockers were young kids, but they weren't ready for prime time. And the Bulldogs had the look, and, they, and, and but they still weren't ready for prime time either. We had, it with, we, had to, we had to work with these guys and teach them how to have a – a real match that you know, not just a boom, 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 run around with your head, head on your tail on fire for 10 or 15 minutes, and then that's it. We had to teach them how to have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and tell a story out there and have a match. And after you know, we had them for six months, eight months, we had the Bulldogs, you know, unbelievable. And we had them doing so good, they, they wanted to put the belts on in WrestleMania, too. Okay, it's something to do, but you're always better off having the baby faces chase the heels with the belts. The heels can put the baby faces over every single night, but not win the match and not lose the belts. And that way, the people the people come every night and they want to see the good guys beat up the bad guys, and that's what you give them. But we don't lose the belts, and you can go forever. But when you give the belts to the good guys, now the good guys got to win every night. So after a while, you don't have an opponent. You beat everybody. Who do you wrestle? Who Who's going to come to see you 
when they know every time you guys win. You know, it's 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 the psych called the psychology of the business. Yeah, you guys were were a strong team for sure. When they broke you up, uh, was that just the office saying, "Okay, let's turn Brutus face and make him the barber"? Or what led? They to didn't that? tell me nothing. They didn't tell Greg nothing. Tell anybody. I didn't know about the barber thing until I, I w- walked into TV three days after WrestleMania. I didn't know anything. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I think I was being set up to fail, but there you go. Um, with with some help, the Hulkster stepped in. Gave me some uh, some advice. Uh, talked to Vince. Said, "Here's what we're going to do with Beefcake. This barber thing. Nobody's ever done it. There's no there's no template for it. There's no uh, way to know what to do. So <laughs> you have to get creative. So I said, okay, I'm going to cut somebody's hair every single time I wrestle. I'm going to put the guy asleep. And when he's asleep, I'm going to cut his hair. And it was something that." The people love. They they, they went crazy for. It. Oh, you got me lit up now. Let me think. And the, the yeah, the people. Uh, you know, it, nobody ever had a clue that somebody that anything like this could happen. And then I got, you know, pretty creative in the ring, doing stuff and cutting there and putting things on and painting stuff and putting a mirror there, do just doing all these and did vignettes and crazy stuff and the barber with it. And then I brought those big clippers out. I went out with little scissors and I went like, Jesus, there's 25,000 people. Those people in the front, they, they can't, the people in the back, they can't really see me. How are they going to see a pair of scissors? So I got those big hedge clippers and went out, wrapped the handles up red and white, run out the first time with them. And the people went nuts. And I was like, oh, we, this is the, this is it. This is the key. I the, the big clippers and cutting the hair and, it was, I mean, it's a hell of a baby face gimmick because he's like, I, I'm more of a heel than the heels are. <laughs> That's what I'm doing to people. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, one of the most memorable was when you got sensational Sherry's hair. How was she to work with? She was, she was great. I, I named her sensational Sherry, scary Sherry. Scary Sherry. And, and, and um, it, it caught on so much. She was just, they, they went wild with it. Yeah. I cut, I cut her off. What do you call it, honey? A wig, a fall? Ponytail. Yeah, she had a big ponytail. I chopped that with the big scissors, and that was in uh, SummerSlam 89, I think. I didn't yeah, that. how was Zeus to work with? He was, he was fairly green, but he was over like crazy. You no, know, super green, um, super nice guy. You know, he liked me and Hulk, which is a, a plus. If you, you know, if you don't like the guy you're, you're working with, that's not going to make it easy, but he trusted us. We had them for a, a day and a half to walk them through some real basic stuff. And we had built-in safeguards to keep him. If he got lost, then he had certain things that he was supposed to do. If he just forgot everything that he was supposed to do, and th- then he knew one thing and he'd do that. And then we could we knew we could regroup him, get him back on track. But he didn't need it. He, he went through two pay-per-view matches without one single screw up one flaw most 99 percent of the guys now on tv they can't get through their match half the time without screwing up and they rehearse it and they do this and they do that it's all written out they walk you, you can't be serious this guy is an actor and we took him through two pay-per-view matches without a mistake that's something yeah, he should be in the celebrity wing of the Hall of Fame. He should be in the Hall of Fame from just for what he did. We didn't put Andy Kaufman in the Hall of Fame for. Zeus did more for wrestling than Drew Carey wow. as well. <laughs> okay, all right. You know what? But God bless them, and I'm glad. You know, I'm glad they're all in the Hall of Fame. Everybody, you know, is in the Hall of Fame. Somebody that deserves to be in too. A fan is asking about Haku. Did you ever see Haku in action? Yeah, <laughs> a lot. I, I know what I go way back with the whole, all the Samoan families and Haku is part of that, you know, part of that generation and part of those guys. And, and, and uh, Noah Kanoa is upcoming in Booger Town Championship. Yeah, and playing. one of his relatives, Noah. Noah Kanoa. Kanoa. Yeah, he works with us in Booger Town Championship Wrestling. Yeah, uh, me and, uh, let's see, me and, uh, 
me and the big guy had a had fun in uh, Baltimore, in the the uh, Safari Club in in Baltimore one one night, and uh, a guy was messing with me at the, at the at our table, and Haku grabbed him by his head and came across the table and bit the end of his nose off and spit it on him. And the bar erupted into a huge melee fight. And then we had, we snuck out the side door and then we had to help him surrender to the police, but they, they, they wound up dropping the charges. They didn't charge him with anything. He didn't get in trouble. And uh, I helped them, you know, get, through that and uh, it was like i had made a friend i had made a, a friend for for life you know he says if anybody ever messes with you beefcake I'm, i'll rip, tear their head off <laughs> i said brother i appreciate that <laughs> now there's a clip that's famous on youtube now of you doing like an interference and i think it was an earthquake match under a new gimmick do you recall what that was in WWE? I think it was around the time you returned from your parasailing accident. You know, they had a guy wearing a uh, fur. Or yeah. Was it, yeah. Yeah, that was just uh, something I was trying to uh, make the adjustment of deciding how much you know, how much I could do in the ring. What, you know, what was I willing to risk? The, the doctor told me I was absolutely out of my mind. I cannot ever wrestle. It's too risky. You're going to die, period, end of the story. So that's a, you know, pretty big decision to make. How, what do I want to do? How, how far do I want to push this? So I I had a few matches. And then after that, I decided you know, I wanted to take a little more time. I felt I wanted to, I wanted to heal a little bit more. And, um, then you know. Then that one. That's when we had the next thing I did. Gogi, I we did a uh, we did that Monday Night Raw, and then what that led into WrestleMania Nine. And you had a bunch of gimmicks in WCW. Did you have a favorite of all of the gimmicks? I know you couldn't use the Brutus the Barber one there, so they tried a lot of different ones. Well, a couple of them were mine. The most of them weren't really theirs. The uh, there was the Butcher just kind of came to fruition I, I, by the clothes I had what we just started calling me the butcher. And then there was the booty man. The, uh, the Zodiac was a character I played in a, a, one of Hogan's movies. Um, there was a bunch of wrestlers and he was doing a scene where he was having a nightmare. It was a nightmare sequence. And I created Mr. This Nanny. Zodiac. Mr. Nanny, right? Yeah. I created this Zodiac character and they were doing the dungeon of doom in WCW. They th Man, we we want that Zodiac guy in the Dungeon of Doom. So next thing you know, I'm riding into the uh, Halloween Havoc in uh, Detroit at the Joe Louis Arena on the back of Bigfoot with Big Paul Wright, the the giant, <laughs> on the back of Bigfoot as the Zodiac. And you know what? It was paying the bills. I you know didn't matter. Basically, after that, they said they couldn't re repackage me anymore. So I went home. And uh, died it real he heavy for like eight weeks, and it was a real strict regiment. And with the, uh, with my training and my body fat went down to five percent. I had my thirty inch waist, twenty inch arms. Uh, I was shredded. I had an eight pack. Nobody even recognized. Me. I grew my hair long. I grew this beard out. Nobody recognized me at all. We walked into CNN Tower, me and Hogan. And it was when they were doing the NWO stuff was running crazy. And he walks me in there. I had my vest on, my chaps. I was all oiled up and jacked. And he said, I want to introduce you to my new disciple. And they were all giddy and laughing, going, oh, my God. God, look at this. Oh, my God, this is the greatest thing ever. Oh, my God. Then he goes, oh, yeah, by, by the way, that's Bruce Beefcake. Half of them ran out of the room. So a bunch of them didn't like me. Bischoff and his crew, they, they didn't like me. So they all took off. But the rest of the people were just sitting there laughing. They couldn't believe it. Like, this is unbelievable. Yeah, it was an amazing uh, transformation. 
So Boca Raton uh, Championship Wrestling, you want to tell us about this commissioner job you're doing before we wrap it up here? Well, um, it's a great, it's a new outfit. There's a lot of young up and coming wrestlers, uh, a lot of NXT guys. Um, uh, we got a seven foot uh, Jack Talos. Jack Talos, he's like seven foot tall giant. About Bull, what's Bull's last name? I, I'm I'm so bad on names. We we got a really great crew of guys. Gangrel works with us um, all the time. Jimmy Hart's been with us already. He's coming back. Jake Roberts has come in. Jim Duggan's come in. Um, it's a you know guys, real class act organization, top notch. You know, a uh, real class act deal for Matt Tavern. Matt Tavern for the, for the for wrestling. Neil the heel is our uh, announcer. We you know they they are uh, they you know they're doing great. It's just it's it's amazing that um, you know if somebody wants to do it, they can get a business going. If if you you know can find some good people, and there's plenty of good people around. Everybody still trying to make a living out there. That you know the COVID epidemic put us all out of work for two years. Yeah, so I'm the commissioner. I make sure everything is just the way I want it. <laughs> and and where can the fans follow you if they want to look you up? Well, Boca Raton Championship Wrestling dot com. Boca Raton Championship Wrestling yeah. dot com. Brutus dot Beefcake. Com. Brutus Beefcake dot com. Uh, yeah, the, but the website for the for Boca Raton Championship Wrestling it's it, easy to find, and they got. And it's endless. There's there's all kind of links on there. They show about uh, names and of of all the the players involved. And uh, it's it's great. I'm I don't have to fly. I can hop in my car and drive over there and stay a day or two. And don't forget over the top, give kids the world. Go to the beach. Yeah, we're, I'm doing. You know, we do some charity events give kids with the, the uh, organization. Give kids the world. We're gonna. Me and the wife are going to rappel down a, a, a hotel in um, a big building in uh, Orlando here in about a week or two. All right. Well, I want to see that. That, that sounds like something that I really want to see. Yeah. We, can you bring your wife on so we can see her for a sec before you go? No, or is no, that no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Ooh, might give you all right. All right. Well, all you right. saw part of her. All right. Yeah, all we right. saw part. Okay. Yeah. There's your wife. That's uh, There she is. Here I am. <laughs> oh, God. Is she on camera with you in that uh, in Boca Raton Championship Wrestling? Yeah. Oh, I'll yeah. be repelling. No, you can, if you go pull up her footage on YouTube, you'll see her. You, okay. you, you can't mistake her, brother. I'm the She's delish. Gorgeous. She's gorgeous. The commission, the delish. Well, there you go. <laughs> You're doing very well for yourself. Uh, I'll let you. you know what? It's good things come to good people. It's about karma, man. You know, you, you, you try to be treat people the way you want to be treated, treat people well, and hopefully, you know, give and and, and you get back. You know, I, we always try to give, 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 and oh, you know what? It, it makes don't a difference. My, right there. <laughs> my power dog. That's go go power doggy up there, like on the back. Oh yeah, oh, she God. she's feisty. All oh, ten pounds of her. This five pounds. This Six pounds dog. of her. I don't know. She's little, but. Yeah, I, I got a little one too here. Uh oh. I got a six pounder too, but she's been oh, quiet throughout this. Oh, we got three. Oh, three? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, yeah. you got a zoo going on. This is Power Doggy. Oh, we got a we got a crazy. All three of them sleep with us at night. It's it's, it's a real service. Can't take baby. <laughs> and then that's, baby. that's that's Go Go. This is Baby. She's a little bigger for Bye, for baby. a long year ch chihuahua, but she. She cries and you th you think it's a human. Like uh, we, we were afraid to leave her in a hotel because if she starts crying for us, somebody's gonna bang the door down thinking we left the baby crying in the room. It's yeah, just, I, I cry understand baby. That's, that's her name like. is Cry Baby. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on with us. Uh, we'll definitely have to have you on again, and I'll let you close this off with whatever you want to tell the fans. I just wanted to thank the fans. I mean, a, a while back I had a knee replacement and they did. The fans raised money to help my knee get replaced and it's doing better. I'm doing better. Um, <clears throat> died and lost 25 pounds. I'm, I'm trying to get more weight off. Um, it, you know, this it, it's not easy getting old. I did 42 years in our business. 
And so the wear and tear is bad, but I'm, I'm feeling great. I got the best wife. I got best friends and people that I'm living with and, and working with. And life, you know, is, is great. You know, God loves me and I love them back. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe.